Now, how do we play this? Hold on just a minute, son. How do we play this, okay? I ain't saying this right, I'm just saying this is how we play it, okay? Here's the lace block. We play this thing. Here's the guy coming down on the double for a problem, okay? There was a time when I used to do a camp C roll with a bill off, but it was double me, but I don't want to bring a line Now, if you do that, you miss enough rope because he's going to pop over this half, going to have you in the half, going to pop over the side of the cup. And we trade it one for one, which we said we're never going to do. Okay, here's what we do. I play this guy, I stab this guy with the pants, and then when I feel this, I want to do this. I want to take that play side, that outside knee in this case right here. And I want to kind of stick it in between. And I want to assume the sumo position. Okay? I want to assume the sumo position. And the reason I want that position is because it's hard as hell for them to root me out of it. Is it always that pretty? No. But that's what we're working for. And, and getting that knee between them and getting the hip turned is really big. Now, when I feel this guy, and I'm going to show you for you, you think where you want to make this better game plan for him, okay? When this guy combos to the second level, when this guy combos to the second level, I'm going to square my pants back up, and I'm going to be able to make the play. I'll give up the ladder. What you want me to do? Give myself up to? One of us has got to do it. One of us has got to stay alive. OK. Here's a comp on the nose. Can't do it. 
can't let them run to the second level and get pulled up. Now, hold on just a minute. Yeah, I don't watch this one here, but this is this is one that I, I did. This makes a hair on the back of my damn head, you know, this whatever. This is a yellow flag. And, and and if you knew him as a damn guy, let me tell you, was a fullback in high school, came from Marshall, out of Marshall, Louisiana, and let me at when he turned the gun on, uh, what it looks like in defense when, when the camera starts to turn the it looks like somebody's uh, opened up a can of worms. Goddamn, he's going to be you know. I mean, they, 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 it's not the best coaching I've ever seen in my life, to be honest. This kid comes out of the shoot, he's a damn fullback, he's just a raw ass. So what you're seeing is a guy who really learned to do things extremely well. Okay, and this play is, I don't know, it, this, I guess it just means a lot, because I know how far the guy can, and y'all have got this in way, you know what I'm talking about. The Ole Miss center and guard are going to do a great job of comboing this play. <coughs> Watch the center really, how they really work hard to him. And he's going to start to play double team. Okay, here's the 30 linebacker. He's got B and the 
battling me to get seen. Run it back for me. This is basically a spill leaf.
Do what you do. Do what you do best. And that's what the cat did. They run the dance and they wind up eating. So if they, they won the ball game, he got it in the end of the score. But they were so many, that's so tenuous how, how, how quickly he played and what a bad angle he played. We got, they scooped this guy and they scooped this guy. So they got four on two. And we really tried to keep them from getting so much movement. Show it again. Watch, let them watch it. Watch this right here. We stunt these guys. Will walks out here. 
stunt these guys, we get worse than the guy bumps his damn head on the go post. Because the, what we did, we stunted it. We got a tire crawl, we stunted it, and washed us. And we got a separation, and the ball, the ball hit that gap and running 100 miles an hour. Here, because the coverage we did, it's five taking to a four taking. And he's playing. That's what I was telling guys last night. It's an advantage of being able to play four. Because there's a strong safety, or there's a nickel walked outside. He had to walk off. We were a different concept. He had to walk off. Here's a four. They go move him to a five. So our guys are taught to play four, five, and stunt, okay? And the linebackers can control it. If they're having a gap control problem, okay, stop right there. If they're having a gap control problem, without having the stunt, they can play it. Let me tell you this, and then this might be something you'd be interested in, like, if we got a gap problem, uh, we got a big gap, and the linebacker, let's say, goes, uh,
see that when they go out here over there, they run everything over there. You know, if you got a slant and they come back, just say call, call, call. Then you bring them back to what you originally started. Okay, what's that? Yeah. If Sam has to remove for coverage, we got the Sam removed. This is another adjustment call that the linebacker can make. He's going to loop these guys. He makes a loop call, a tear call, and it's, it's a loop call. He's going to loop to a two. He's going to loop to a seven. We give the defense width because we've got the Sam removed because of coverage. Now, what I'm trying to show you is under defense with adjustment calls, okay? That's what, what we're talking about. Sam's removed. We all got these problems. Sam's removed because of coverage. Our, the word, it could be ham sandwich. It don't make a damn what the word is. But our word is tear. Tear, tear, tear. But you learn to know who now when we snap the ball, he's going to lose him to play a strike. That means that the back of is going to lose to play a seven. Because the sand's removed. Okay? Now, the wheel walks, when the wheel walks, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. The wheel walks now, because of coverage, never being able, never being outflanked by number two, where he's got to reroute number two, you've got wheel removed. So the call now is pirate. Pirate tells the three technique to do a face. It tells the five to do what we call a ram, but it's a face the same way. So there's a face and there's a face. So what we're doing now, what we're doing is what you saw Jordan Tech with people bump the hill and then go goes down. Because we got we got forced and separated from the wheel. Remember the play he took off on? We looked at it last night. But you can do this. This is a pirate call. Anytime that I bring a guy across the face to an eight to a gap, I call it for him a face technique. It tells him he's got to cross this man's face to get to his gap responsibility. And that's always been kind of helpful for him to understand it. And what he does is he loosens a little bit, and his aiming point now becomes an ear hole the ear hole of the next inside line. Coach, I see you right that there. Does that make sense? You no, see what I'm saying? Sir. But that's a face technique. Knowing that I've got to go across the face of the man I'm on to get to my gap. And I want to go a little flatter than I do I, and I, the next lecture from stunts. And I go a little flatter than I do on the other side. Okay? Now, this is, this is interesting for you right here. For you. This might be helpful. <laughs> Because let me tell you, we played in Florida in 1980, and we give up in a long run because the linebacker is actually one to take, but the linebacker had made a taking call to the end. And Florida dropped back, he lost contain, the quarterback gets outside and throws the ball down the field, we lose contain, okay? This is 1980. So somebody wises my dumb ass up. And they say, look, anytime you call those guys inside, the nose needs to read it out. If the ball goes into three lane, or the ball sprinting into two lane, the nose needs now to take the container. Now that may be elementary. Y'all may do that. If you do, that's fine. But let me tell you, it's a really good little old thing to know to, to make that check. So let me, let me put it this way. Even if we didn't have a power call, he's got to do it on the power as you can see. But even if we didn't have a power call, Back to that big split that y'all got in here, okay? And I'm five feet, so I'm back and forth about it. I got contained, okay? The line inside the linebacker tells me, take it, boom, I take it down, I'm All right? Before I take it, when he makes the taking call, I go, fight it, fight it. I'm alert to know that I got contained. I got contained, but I'm getting it up when it's done. And what I'm doing is I'm testing to take it away. If it's drawn back pass, if the ball goes into three lanes, you want to play the center, and you see the ball going to three lanes, 
And so I would encourage you to teach communication to your kids. Pirate. Pirate tells him, though, they don't have to make a spike. In built in pirate tells the nose, if the wheel's removed and he makes a pirate call, I've got to contain the drop back of the screen. I'm going to leave that now to everybody. If, if you ever go ahead. I don't need to leave any death. Y'all just tell me, move on, Pete. All right, shoot me, shoot me or something. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't want to back or talk about Stop. Say the you have your front, talk about the in front, um, say the strong side, the invert, secondary, back to the weak side. Do you prefer if your back side guy to be uh, in the box or back like, like, I don't he don't I don't want him in the box. Now again, see, I had made I, I, I need it, I need to go a little I, I, I'm gonna go with the cloud ground. And underneath it, underneath it, we're playing two games. So you're right, we're gonna support from outside in. Okay. Yeah, so you are right we are going to support from outside in and that guy is gonna be the strong safety, let's say in cover three. We, we don't want him. We don't want him up there too tight, but we want him about two and seven, where he can support the run. That's an under defense. In under O, okay, we're going to support from inside with the safety, and we're playing wider with our defense line because under O is a prone concept. Same line, same under or reduction or whatever, but it's a funnel concept to the unlocked player. Because we're going to support with the safety inside out. When we're playing two gap, we're going to support with the safety from outside in. Okay, so under and under over are two different concepts because we're playing not only the front difference, but we're playing the coverage. All right, here's the sugar bowl, and I just put this one in here. This is the sugar bowl uh, against Illinois. All right, here's the same linebacker. Man, really, you might want to look at that just a minute, too. We play the sound, the sound linebacker in a tilt. Don't see it? A lot, you know, we used to play it right up there like this. And play, we really play it more in a tilt now. Okay? And the reason we do it, there's so much pulling or kicking out of the fullback. He's already seeing it. You know, we used to squeeze with him and then get your eyes up and see all that. See, he's like this. He can get his hand on the guy and he's looking in there where the old guard's coming from or where the fullback's coming from. <coughs> Does that make any sense? That's why we, if we kicked it around a lot and we really found that he played everything he had to play better in a, in a little top stand because his eyes are in there where the trouble is. Huh? I'll just say. Yeah, okay. Now, what they're going to do is, is is they're going to move the tight end, they're going to trade the tight end. Sure, that's play right here. And we made a reload call. That's not We reloaded the defense. And for this play, I just put that in there because I thought it might be something interesting. That was our call. When they trade that tight end, we just reloaded the defense. We just changed it. We gave it the other way. And I tell the guys, move smartly. If the ball is snapped, I tell the damn guys, if the ball is snapped, play that again. Play your again on the move. But we, we try to move smartly to your gaps. The linebacker makes a reload call. And that's how we do it. Do you want to go with the linebackers? Do you want to go with Yeah, everybody moves. Well, we changed it from, we changed it from under over here. Now we're under over here. <laughs> no, 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 no. We just slide. No, I think it's a lot of charge It's easy, but the linebackers change because one of them is not even on wheels. And, and uh, they, they do different things that's when it's well. Now, let me show you, let me talk to you a minute about this. And again, let me tell you this. I don't have all the damn answers or anything like that. I'm throwing things out there. Some of them you may, you may not want to fool with. Some of them, some of them, some of them you might like and everything. So, you know, it, it's... I'm just throwing it out there now. I just happened to look up there and see that, that split inside in. I'm telling you, we got some great coaching points on that. Now, you see how he's angled in? His aiming point 
is the knee of the split back would be the knee. If he's in a high, it's the imaginary split back. Alright? We don't want his ass at this angle. We want him at this angle. Okay? And what he's going to do is he's going to look through the hip of the tackle to the near back. If the tackle blocks down, he's going to squeeze. Just like he do if he was playing right up there on his ass, okay? But, let me say this to you. If he zones, we're going to knock his ass off because of this. Turn this for me just a little bit. And I'll have you to take a breath. Now, when this guy zones, guy, he's got to extend because of my whip, okay? And when he does, I'm going to knock his ass back. <coughs> the, the, the only tough block he has to work on this get this allowance is if the tackle turns him out. He said now he's got to jack his ass and squeeze and keep his nose on the outside tip, but he's got to try to help us reduce the hole. Okay, really think about the nose too. We play a tilt under Coach Armstrong. Yeah, I'm sorry, Coach, go ahead. The guys on the left are in a right-handed stance? Yeah, and exactly right that last night. Yeah. I apologize too, I should have said that. Guys on the left, or in a right-handed stance when we attack defense, which is under O. That happens to be under O. See the tilt nose and the threes and fives. The guys on the left are in right-handed stance. The guys, the guys on the right are in left-handed stance because that's the strike side. So when the technique changes, the stance changes? The, when the, we go to two gap, okay, all they have to do is they can get anything they want to do. They can play two gap in four four stands. Okay. We really don't. I don't. I don't. I know what you're asking. It's just shit. It's just a lot of changing. But it really ain't. But it's imperative when they're in one gap because of the way we play it that the guys on the left and right hand stances. And what I do is this: the first thing when the freshmen come in, I say, "Anybody left handed?" If I don't already know, I should already know that. Anybody left handed? And what you can do is put the guys on the right. So if, if your left tackle here is playing four eye, this guy right here, what, yeah, he moved him over. If he moved over here, here, he can play in any stance he wanted to play. What he's two guessing. What if he was playing inside shade on the tackle? He's playing four technique play in any anything he wants. Okay. Now, let me answer this. Let me say a little bit further too. We talked about this last last night. See that split right there? If, if he played a four, if this guy moved him and he played a four, he would be playing head up on that big ass guy right there in the front. If the split was wider, he'd be playing inside out. And theoretically, what you'd say, and I don't know what you're saying to me, is he'd swap his hands, which if they, we do, some of them do that, and stagger his left foot. Theoretically, you could do that. When we play two gap, I don't make a big deal out of it. We're playing one gap that stands is really big. This crash five that we call it, guys, I, I, I know I haven't done a very good job explaining. I'm telling you that there's good thoughts in that, okay? Not to aim him down in here because he's going to get his ass hooked on the zone block, guys. I'm telling you, the guy's going to open his ass up and he's going to hook him. The other thing is, if he crashes at that angle, he's not going to be able to contain the boot for you if you want him to contain the boot. You are pissing up a roll again. He ain't going to be able to do it. Once his outside foot gets upfield, he's going to break a damn ankle trying to contain the damn boot. You guys contain the boot with the... Yes, sir. Got to. We got to contain the boot. And, and, and this guy right here, and let me tell you something neat too that just might be, that you might like this. When we do get the boot, if the guy is a great runner, we'll set the contain with this linebacker and play. We'll do this for we robot and run with the tight end with that. If the guy's a great passer, if the guy's a great passer, we'll keep this one in coverage and he'll robot with the tight end and we'll set the contain with that one. I just did something good out there. <laughs> Good shit, okay? Uh, this guy, if he runs, we're going to get to his ass and hurt him. And we'll give up a little bit of pass coverage because this is harder for him to get over here to this half the feet. 
But if he's a good pastor, let's leave this guy, let's roll out his ass and run with the tight end on the crossing route, and let's second contain with this guy. Play the weak side flat then with the corner? Yes. Depends on the coverage, but yeah, normally that's what you do. You'd have a guy out here playing flat coverage. Okay, so crash five, that's what we call a C5, crash five. And, and, and I'm telling you now, if you just look at it a little bit, there's good thoughts in what I just threw out there. It, it's really, it's really good help for us. The guy that replaced me, I was, Nick hired me to come in there and talk to him, which he lasted one year, okay? First thing he said to me is, yeah, I tell the crash five to come around for his I said, well, you ain't gonna do it here. Not if you don't stay here. He comes up and be all over you. That guy, he don't want that guy flat. He can't do the things we want him to do coming down there flat. He won't set angle. And that, see, this is a good shot because you can see the angle. It's the outside knee. That's his angle point. The outside knee of the imaginary split back. So if he's in the eye, it'll be the same thing. He just imagines a back. Now let me tell you what I did. You talk about a guy, you talk to a guy right here that started my first job as a B team. Okay, probably like a lot of y'all in here. And you know what? I'm damn proud of it, okay? I learned a long time ago to teaching aids were damn important. So I used to put me like they did in the plays. I put me a damn X like down here with some chalk, and I put me a damn line running through it. And that's how I taught. So I saw this cool play. Everybody had to stand on those X's. Remember how they used to do that shit? And then, uh, and then, uh, so I put me a damn chalk.